Guten Yardening, everybody! It is the beginning of April, and that means a whole new set of seeds are ready to be started indoors, and even some of them outdoors, right now here in Zone 5. This is the third video in our series where we focus on the seeds that we want to start now so we can take advantage of as much of our growing season as possible. Now, if you don't know your growing zone, you can find it on the USDA plant hardiness map. And you can see zone five here, which is highlighted in blue, expands across over 30 states. So if you're in one of these states, chances are you're possibly in zone five. Now, zone five's growing season is a little bit on the short end compared to some of the higher numbers with our last frost date typically around May 15th and our first frost date around November 15th. Again, if you don't know your growing zone, you should definitely look it up. It's really important to know as you're planning out your garden. And if you're in a different growing zone from us, that's okay because typically these dates shift a few weeks either direction. With that being said, we've got quite a few plants to look at today, so let's get started. I would like to remind you as we get started that this is not necessarily an exhaustive list, but these are some of the more common vegetables that are planted in our area and that we love to grow in our garden. The first vegetable we're going to focus in on is our Swiss chard. Now Swiss chard happens to be one of my favorite leafy greens and I actually think it's one of the most beautiful plants in the garden, especially if you get that rainbow mix. Those stems are stunning. When you cook it up, and I like to use this steamed, although many other people like to eat it raw, but when it's steamed up, I think it has the smell of hay. In fact, I used to call it hay when I was a kid, but it is absolutely delicious. It's very healthy, extremely good for you, and it is quick growing. At only five to seven days of germination time with an optimal germination temp lower than many of the other vegetables you're gonna see today, it's quite easy to get started indoors and if you plant it now, you'll be able to transplant this outdoors by mid to late April, as this plant does quite well in cooler weather. It's a good spring and a good fall crop. It's also a great cut and come again vegetable, much like the next one that we're gonna see here, meaning that you can harvest those big outer leaves and the plant will continue to grow. So this isn't one that you harvest all at once. You keep going back for more and more of this delicious plant. This is one of those vegetables that we would start as soon as possible. The next seed to get started is another one of our leafy greens, and that's our lettuce. Lettuce is another one of those quick growing vegetables at only 30 to 60 days to maturity. If you're looking for a vegetable to get in the garden so that you can have quick results and pull produce out as quickly as possible, lettuce is one that is a great choice. Much like Swiss chard, lettuce is typically treated as a cut and come again vegetable, meaning you don't harvest the whole plant off at once. Instead, you harvest those bigger outer leaves and allow the plant to keep growing. The germination time on our lettuce is seven to 10 days, which is about average. But again, the optimal temp for germination is between 55 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which is on the cooler end, making this another great seed to start indoors, even if you don't have any way to control the heat other than the ambient temperature in the room. When we start these seeds here at the beginning of April, we're able to transplant out toward the end of April, which means that we should have a harvestable crop sometime in May. That's pretty quick for here in zone five. One of the cool things about lettuce, in my opinion, is that there are just so many different varieties. I think you're bound to find one that you want. And if you've never seen our video on the hay bale salad bar that we set up last year, you should 100% check that out and see how we used our lettuce and I think a creative way. Now, as we move into the next set of seeds, we're going to be looking at seeds that require a bit more warmth and in general, a longer growing season. The first one is our cantaloupe. Now, I absolutely love the taste of cantaloupe. One of the things that I found growing up was that if I got a cantaloupe that wasn't fully ripe, I did not enjoy that nearly as much as if I could figure out how to pick a ripe cantaloupe. And there are a couple of different strategies for this, but I'm gonna to talk to you about that here in just a second. The germination time period for a cantaloupe seed is between four and 10 days. But again, we want that optimal temperature to be a little bit higher between 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have a seed starting mat, 
that is something that will help in this condition, keeping that soil temperature up. That's really important as you start germinating your cantaloupe. And cantaloupe also likes a warmer soil outdoors. And so when we are transplanting this, even though we're starting around mid-April for this plant, we're transplanting late May to early June, once that soil has had a chance to really heat up outdoors. Cantaloupe typically take between 80 to 90 days to mature, and you can tell when the cantaloupe is maturing because the stem itself will start to turn brown. But my preference in terms of determining if a cantaloupe is ready to eat is to take both of my fingers and press them gently on the end that is away from the stem. If you get a little bit of movement there, like it feels just a little bit soft, it's a perfect time to eat. If it's rock hard at that end, you're gonna find that that cantaloupe is not ready. And if it pushes in really easily, well, you wish you could turn back time and eat it about a week ago. Another personal favorite of ours is the zucchini. The germination time on our zucchini is between seven to 10 days. Once again, at that same 80 to 85 degree Fahrenheit, optimal germination temperature, just like our cantaloupe, the maturation time period here though is between 45 to 50 days so why would we suggest that if we're planting this as a seed now mid-april that we're transplanting outdoors late may to early june and one of the reasons behind this is some studies show that you can avoid some of the problems with like the squash bugs among other issues if you plant just a little bit later in the season we do recommend you keep a close eye out on the leaves of the zucchini once you do get them outdoors because once those squash vine borers come or once the squash bugs come they can destroy a plant so quickly overnight you can go from a very healthy zucchini to absolutely nothing and believe me we speak from experience there one other thing to note about zucchini is just like cucumbers and beans, the more you pick from the zucchini plant, the more will produce. If you just allow them to wait and grow into a massive zucchini, you're not going to like the taste so much. And unless you're trying to collect the seeds, you're going to really stunt the development and production of your plant. Our next seed is another fruit and one of my personal favorites, which is the watermelon. Now we have tried to grow sugar baby watermelon among others and we need to do more and practice more with these plants for sure. The germination time at 80 degrees Fahrenheit is somewhere between three to 10 days, but the maturation time for a watermelon is typically at least 80 days and can go longer. This is one of those fruits that seems to sit there for quite a period of time and it seems as though nothing's developing and then suddenly you go outside and you've got four or five watermelon right there on the vine. Similar to a cantaloupe, the stem will start to turn brown as the watermelon reaches maturity. This is one of those plants that we often recommend keeping the fruit off the ground if possible once it starts to develop. Now they're typically a little heavy to try to trellis easily if you do a variety other than maybe a sugar baby. One of those bigger varieties of watermelons, you're just going to need to try to keep off the ground using anything from hay, to cardboard. We've even seen people use flooring tiles to keep the watermelon off the ground. And one of the main reasons why we're trying to keep this off of direct contact to the ground as it grows is to prevent any of those diseases or rotting that could occur if you don't do that. One other thing to note about our watermelon is that consistent watering is essential. They have a ton of water inside and you have to get that water there somehow. And so while the fruit is developing, that is a key time to water thoroughly. Cucumbers are another one of our personal favorites and cucumbers are quick germinating. Again, three to 10 days, they can be very quick, especially as the temperature of your soil is kept nice and warm. So 80 to 90 degree Fahrenheit is the optimal temp for germinating your cucumbers. You'll transplant these late May to early June because they love that warm soil and they are typically pretty quick growing at 50 to 70 days. Now we have a couple of varieties of cucumbers here that are a little bit faster than that. And if you haven't checked out our single seed challenge where we're growing a really unique variety out of the Himalayas called the Sikkim cucumber, you should definitely check that out. We're really excited to see how those develop. 
Much like the watermelon, when the fruits start to bear on your cucumbers, you want to water consistently. Do not let the roots dry out. If you do, they will show, the plant itself will show quick signs of drought. And just like the zucchini, the more you pick from the cucumbers, the more you're going to see produced by the plant. One other thing that's important to remember about this type of plant that has both the male and the female flowers on the same plant is to not be discouraged when for the first couple of weeks you only see male flowers, which don't have any fruit on them. You want to wait, allow those 10 to 20 flowers to pass by, and then you'll start to see the female flowers. That is not uncommon at all, and you should expect it. The last of the seeds that we're gonna talk about in terms of indoor seeds starting right now are our pumpkins. Now pumpkins can be started mid-April all the way through early May. They also love that warm soil outdoors, but do keep in mind that the maturation time for these pumpkins is between 90 and 120 days. And so the germination time of five to 10 days with a nice temperature range. I mean, you can really start these indoors at any of those temperature points. The higher temperature will get or should get a little bit faster germination. But we're talking about a plant that is going to take up to four months or even more if you can leave it on the vine longer we're transplanting late May to early June, so we want to take advantage of the time that we have to make sure we get to a fully mature pumpkin. One sign that your pumpkin is fully mature is that the stem itself will start to crack, and at times they may even fall off the stem, saving you a little bit of effort. One thing to keep in mind is that pumpkins, unlike cantaloupe or bananas or pears, do not mature any further once you pull them off the vine. So it's important to not pick a pumpkin too early and to leave it on the vine as long as you can. Otherwise, you're going to find a green pumpkin inside and that doesn't taste nearly as good. One other thing to know about fertilizing pumpkins is that it prefers a low nitrogen diet. So when you look at NPK, you can have a higher P and a higher K, but you wanna keep the N a little bit lower. So a low nitrogen diet will help these pumpkins develop well. Now, even though our last frost date has not yet passed us by, there are a few vegetables that we can sow outdoors right now, including our spinach, our peas, and our carrots. And we're gonna do a video on sowing those vegetables outdoors in the very near future. So please stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching the video today. We hope you found the information useful. If you have questions for us, you can always leave us a comment or email us at contactgutengardening at gmail.com. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share with anybody and everybody. And as always, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.